Hi guys, it's Sean from Indonesia. Welcome to this episode where I'm going to be talking about three of my biggest mistakes in my life. I'm going to start with the third one. The third one would probably be resigning from Zalora. So that is actually my first and only professional work experience here in Indonesia. I got the job after I resigned from my parents' business and I didn't consider that a professional business because it was like nepotism. It's like yeah, it was all I'll talk about it another time like what it's like working for your Asian parents. Yeah, it's it's an interesting experience, but I entered Zalora and then I actually met with a great team. I was actually the head of department and I mentioned it in my previous video where I was in charge of the catalog. So the photo shoot um, and then all the contents, all the marketplace images and contents were basically going through my division. We were helping QC them, we were making them uh, go live on the catalog. So I had a team of about 40 people at some point, very creative people and creative people are very, very difficult to work with. There were content writers, there were photographers, there were photo retouchers. Then I had the CEO, the directors that I kind of uh, communicate with, I answer to them. And I'm actually older than most of them. So, and probably, I don't know, I had a lot, I was schooled in the US, first of all, I had a fashion design degree in, in New York. And I've had five years of working experience, uh, having my own clothing line, which includes everything from like marketing, uh, retailing, online and things like that. So I came in with a lot of experience and I came in with a lot of positivity. There were a lot of people under me and then there were also a lot of people from different divisions that I worked very closely with. I worked with like the buyers, I worked with the marketing team and in that work environment, it, it was very welcoming. It was a very diverse environment and they were uh, open to ideas and there was completely my playground because I'm someone who's full of ideas and full of creativity and I love to give and at some point I was also in charge of uh, the events for the company to, for the welfare of the, the people you know so I was doing um, committee stuff is that what it called social committee and I also uh, working with different divisions in maybe areas that were not specifically in my job role but it was supporting that division because in my uh, studio I, there was a lot of things that I could have done I could have done campaigns and things like that that were not going to cost the company anything that could actually benefit the growth of the company benefit other divisions and things like that. I was really interested in collaborating picking people's brains learning where they come from and how we can build something together so that was such a beautiful wonderful opportunity and um, when I left, actually, I gave a three months notice, which is actually quite long. And at the time, I didn't even bother uh, looking for a new job because I was stuck in my head. It was my first ever professional experience. And I was thinking, oh, my God, if this is like the, the first one, there must be many, many more that I could explore. What if I had moved overseas? What if I moved, you know, to Europe, to the U.S.? So I was full of hope and I was kind of, again, stuck in my head without thinking. So the last three months during the handover period, I was just busy um, just implementing my uh, ideas, handing over you know anything that I could uh, hand over, basically for the team and for other people to make sure that the division kept running. I finally, uh, you know, that day came when I had to leave. Oh my God, that was really sad. Uh, yeah, I really, I, even today, I really still miss a lot of the people in, in my team. and. You know, all, all of them have taught me some things, whether they're the overachievers or maybe they're someone who, you know, kind of needs a little bit pushing, a <laughs> nudging along. Because I've met all kinds of people and that's where I really learned, you know, how to deal with things in a professional setting. Um, and I found out a lot about my strengths and weaknesses and I really had to answer to someone. So, yeah. And I think, again, one more reason why I resigned was because the salary was like, I got local salary, even though I've lived abroad for 25 years before that. So I couldn't take that sitting down in a way. I Again, I got arrogant. So the day came, I left the company and then I just started updating my resume, CV, and I just started, you know, updating my LinkedIn and everything would look just really good. And then I had only like two interviews and one of them was actually really exciting. It was with Disney. Disney Indonesia and they didn't call me back after the interview. I was really disappointed, but no one else. I mean, I, I hounded people. I kind of emailed people, applied for many online jobs, 
by the way, most of the jobs that uh, people acquire are, are through personal references, just so you know, maybe like 80% of them. So cold calling and all that usually it doesn't work. So if you want to work in a company, you better know somebody in there. And this is in fact how I got into Zalora. I got in there because I had a friend who had a friend working in there. But yeah, so I regretted leaving without having a backup plan or anything. But I did discover a lot of wonderful things after I discovered my photo studio and my you know, natural soap brand, which I just mentioned earlier. Uh, my love for plants, my YouTube, everything started because I did, I resigned. But uh, even thinking back today, it was uh, sort of a mistake. And when these days, when my friends, you know, have you know challenges or they feel like they are better than their companies and things like that, I'm always, I always challenge them. Like, you know, do you, are you sure you want to resign? You know, what's going to happen to your division? And is there really better opportunities out there and things like that so i'm always a little bit cautious amongst my friends when they want to resign because it is one of the mistakes that i really wish i could take back i mean i could have stayed there for another six months or a year or maybe even more and i i lived pretty comfortably to be honest i just didn't have the freedom and uh you know because we had to work within the working hours and i was renting an apartment in the city and again, the salary just wasn't, I didn't have many savings. You know, I couldn't have bought an apartment. I couldn't have brought, bought a property with that salary. So that's my third biggest mistake. My second biggest mistake was coming back here to Indonesia. <laughs> so I graduated in the, in the US, in New York City with fashion design degree. And then I had a menswear brand in the States and then in Shanghai for about five years in, the, in China. And I knew my time in China would be pretty limited because I, nobody lives there forever, right? I mean, we're all expats there. Um, but I garnered so much experience there and actually had a lot of network. I had so many friends, I had friends in advertising and fashion and things like that, where I felt like if I did uh, because I did close down my business there. I felt like I, I couldn't compete with the local market. We'll talk about that in another episode. But uh, I should have fought harder to stay. In fact, um, in 2019, was it? Yeah, 2009, so 2008 or 9, I left New York to move to China because of the economy crisis happening in, in the US and the buyers stopped coming to view my collections and people were starting to pay late. So I, there was a red flag for me to leave, but actually there was also one regret. You know, I should have fought harder to stay because I haven't been back to the States ever since. And I've lived there for 10 years. I, I used to go camping upstate in New York and I love the city life. I would, on, I would really go out to the bars like three to five times a, a week. That's how crazy it was. Uh, back in my college years and also when I was working because I was working in fashion so all my friends were like stylists and they were just people you know so, or there were just random people who, who just had time to you know to chill to have dinner to have drinks after it was actually a very you know you do work really really hard but then in New York you do have a lot of uh, time off when when you have you know you're you're Time out, like you know, you have you hang out with your friends. It's really, really meaningful. You have you meet really interesting people. There's a lot of energy in the city. So, yeah. So basically, I regretted leaving New York. I shouldn't. Ha I should have fought harder to stay. I should have probably got a job instead, and I should have probably not come back to Indonesia. I should have probably stayed in China a little bit longer, or uh, used the network at the time to move on to somewhere else, like work in maybe other cities in Southeast Asia or. I don't know, Europe or something. But I chose to come back to try to help my parents' business, which apparently didn't need much help at all. Uh, it was a mistake on my part. And I guess my parents were also not disappointed. They they were expecting me to come back and, and carry the torch as it is. But I had, I'm someone with a lot of creative input and I, I'm very modern with my approach to things. I, I, I look at data, I analyze things. So that didn't go well with this, the family style business that they've built up uh, and it's actually successfully running for 40 something years. So I have respect for that. I'm not going to uh, go up there and change everything. And yeah, so anyways, I digress. So to recap, the third mistake was leaving 
uh, resigning from my previous company, Zalora. Number two would be moving back to Indonesia. Number one, biggest mistake. And I don't know if you can guess this. There are drum rolls. <laughs> my biggest mistake is getting my dogs. Yeah. Um, I know, I don't know if it sounds really bad or if some of you are gasping now, judging me like, you're an animal hater. It's a very conflict. I, I, I'm very conflicted with this my whole life. I've had Gia, she's sitting over there, I've had Gia for 14 years. Josie passed away uh, half a year ago, bless her soul. They were with me for so long, I got them in New York, I brought with them with me to Shanghai and then now here to Indonesia. I was not ready for dogs. I was not financially independent. I was struggling with my businesses, I was working, you know, my butt off and you know, they were cute and all that, but I was also the sole father. I was the sole guardian of the dogs the whole time. I mean, I did hire some help uh, to take care of their daily needs. Oh my God, I sound like a really spoiled brat now, <laughs> sorry. But I, I, even today, I still had some help uh, re taking care of Gia. She is a handful. Mini Dachshunds as a breed, they are a big mouthful, just so you know. Uh, so I picked the wrong breed, baby. But I've always thought, you know, my life could have gone a lot further. I would have made different choices, different decisions had I, had I not had my dogs. And especially now when I have five businesses running with a lot of opportunities coming my way, um, that, you know, I have her, I have Gia, which is the now more needy and demanding than ever. Of course, her time is coming up soon. And this is also why I'm very nervous and I'm spending as much time as I can with her. Um, but a lot of my anxiety, my stress, and my time is spent on her. And I would have made a bigger difference. Because again, I'm going to talk about this in the channel. My mission in life, I'm going to spoil it a bit, is to, to make a difference. To build people up. Um, and that brings me joy when I see people succeed. And I love to learn new things. I love to create. And I love, because I'm a creative soul. And then I like to make things better. And then I like to teach them. So that is my cycle. I'm going to talk about that in a dedicated episode. But uh, that mission is really, really hindered by my dogs. And I, I love them to death, but I, it's, very, it's very, very conflicting. Trust me, it's not easy for me to say this, especially uh, so publicly as well. I don't know if you guys do feel the same about your pets, if you've gotten pets. Um, but I always thought that I would be further along in life. I would have helped a lot of people. I would have, you know, made this world better if I didn't have, didn't spend so much time with them. So this is also maybe a, a kind of a PSA for you guys who are considering getting dogs or cats or whatever, or if you have friends or family. Um, I, I, I have a video uh, I'm going to link up above about my dogs that I share, you know, my sort of my experiences, my challenges with them. But this is maybe also an, a plea for you guys to think twice before you get your dogs because they are miserable when you're not around, when you're busy, when you're ignoring them. They're actually pretty, yeah, they, they feel very insecure. They feel very left out because they're pack animals. So yeah, those are my three biggest mistakes. I don't know where this video is going with this, but I thought it would just be interesting. It's also a, a self-reflection for myself. And maybe I should follow up with a three things I did right. But I can't think of any. I, I That's bad, right? That's really bad. I'm, hang on. Sorry, that just put me on the spotlight. I literally just thought of it now. Like I should have probably the three things that I did right. I mean, I guess the, uh, just impromptu because that should be its own episode. I think ha uh, doing the, the YouTube channel, that was number one. That was really, really good because my work here uh, with my plant uh, YouTube has a lot of impact. It was a channel for me to learn things and discover things along the way and, and share that experience, share that excitement and that discovery with uh, a pretty big audience. So that's definitely one. And what else did I do right in this life? Mm. I can't. I can't think of any. I mean, I'm sure I did. I don't know. Um, I mean, I guess you know all those little things add up, like me working for the company. And I hope that, of course, my team members they found me to be a, a pretty good leader, and that I've helped them along the way in, in my previous 
works or even in my all my businesses basically i hope my customers and all that they enjoy the fruits of my labor they enjoy my products and services but i can't think of anything that i've achieved so i'm gonna leave it at that if i think of it i will let you know but maybe i have not achieved what i've set out to do yet and my struggle is still a long way to go <laughs> enough rambling i guess i'll see you in the next one thanks bye